Hello everyone, I'm Brown Mithra. It's Black Friday. Uh, that's like a holiday as far as Kingdom Death is concerned. <laughs> we got a huge update. Uh, the backer kit was reopened, plus the Black Friday sales on the store. Um, so all that stuff's awesome. Uh, I wanted to do this video because I saw a lot of people asking about like which Wave 4 expansions or what stuff is worth it or how much, you know, how much with the price tag and stuff. Um, and I just wanted to do some King Death content to celebrate the Black Friday. So we'll go over the update with this and then I'm going to talk about the Wave 4 expansions. I'll talk about the Gambler's Chest and the Campaigns of Death, which are Wave 3, the Gambler's Chest and Campaigns of Death, as well as the 1.6. Those are Wave 3 things, so first we'll look at the update, then we'll look at the Wave 3, then we'll look at Wave 4. So this will be a pretty long video, I'll try to keep it shorter. Um, I don't know, I've never done a video quite like this. But, um, you know, with YouTube, you get, um, like, it shows you what other viewers who view your channel. It shows you what other videos they also viewed. And, I mean, unsurprisingly, a lot of people also watch other YouTubers who cover board games, and they do a lot of this stuff. <laughs> I don't know, I've never done it where you just talk about things that you've backed on Kickstarter or just read the update. Um, but with my current situation, I can't really record um, full gameplay episodes right now. And I wanted to do something just as a thank you for people who subscribe so they continually get videos. And also just to, you know, share my opinion on the Wave 4 and Wave 3. Because a lot of people, when the backer kit opens, you might want to... You know, it's hard to keep track of what's exactly in there because updates are very sparse and uh, it's been a lot better this year as far as updates go than the last three years. And remember, this Kickstarter is already th four years old. <laughs> so the first three years were almost no update or any information and you have to go through a lot of updates if you want to look at all this stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. My plan here is to first go over it, give my opinion on it, and then I'll say whether or not I decided to actually buy it or back it or whatever. But um, just, to, I mean, obviously, because everyone knows I, I do have all 12 expansions now. It was awesome on the Black Friday. I was able to get the Slenderman and the Lonely Tree, which were the only ones that I was missing. Um, and I've gotten all the Echoes of Death. But... I will say that I, even though I own everything, doesn't mean that, like, it's just like, oh, of course he's going to agree to buy everything because he has everything. Uh, that's not true. Actually, when I backed the 1.5 Kickstarter, um, I have the website open right here, I only purchased one, two, three, four, five expansions to begin with. Of the original 12 when I backed 1.5 because I did not back the original Kickstarter um, so I only had purchased five I ended up buying the other stuff as I went along and it was the same uh, with this so I did not just instantly back everything in wave 4 um, there were certain things that I have backed over time after I received more information so like I said I will share my thoughts on them why I think they're really good and why they sh prioritize them, why I back them when I did back them, or why I purchased them when they did, and then whether or not I even bothered with some of the Wave 4 stuff or not. Um, so, let's just go right now, right into it. Oh, and one more thing. I'm going to try to edit this down, but at the same time, I don't, I don't like edited... It's hard because I've never done something like this, but I have watched videos where people just <laughs> give their whole opinion. It's like an hour long. Um, and that's those. some people are obviously better at it than I am. Uh, you get better with practice. So I will say that this will be edited, but only where I'm 
you know, switching tabs on Windows or switching things just to, you know, make it right to the point where we go right from expansion to expansion. I'll edit all the parts of me opening up different windows and stuff like that. So with that, <laughs> let's go to the actual uh, backer kit. All right. So here is the backer kit. Uh, you can see here I've got it uh, moved over because I'm logged in. And like I said, I don't. I want to not let you see everything that I've backed right away. Uh, I want to give my. I know what I've backed, and after I describe it to you, or wh I'll tell you why I backed it, why I thought it was good, whether or not it's necessary, and all those things. And then at the end, after talking about the the Wave Four expansion and things, then I'll tell you whether or not I actually got it, and I'll tell you when I got it. If I if I thought it was so good, I sealed the deal right away as soon as the Kickstarter, or if I got it. 2018 because I can see here I've got stuff I back 2018 and 2019 and 2020 Black Fridays so these were it's a slow burn I've been adding them um, and that I believe that is the way to go unless you bought the Gold Lantern Pledge right away those are very worth it um, I think I think it's better to, to build as you get information on it so I don't feel you should back everything right away I will tell you the ones that I feel, um, you know, things that are definitely worth the value, and some of them will go up, because, like, the Campaigns of Death, uh, just, I mean, full disclosure, I got it at the $40 thing, so, Campaigns of Death I th always thought was in originally awesome, um, so, even at the 175 which it is currently right now, I still think that's worth it. And I have other expansions I'll talk about in the future, which I think will v go up and down in price. So, with that said, you can see here, these are the Wave 3, Campaigns of Death, and this is the Gambler's Chest. Uh, wave 4 appears to just be promo stuff um, or slight content added. I think these three here are now Wanderers. Um, the Pathfinders of Death, these whatever uh then you have the expansions here this is another wanderer role survivors so let's so these are the way three we'll go this first first on these two then you can see here here's all the expansions and then i'll go in order and i'll talk about them which would be uh the super survivors i guess which is technically an expansion and then uh abyssal woods black knight death armor First Hero, Frog Dog, Griffin, Honeycomb, Weaver, Inverted Mountain, Ivory Dragon, Nightmare Ram, Oblivion Mosquito, Pariah, Red Witches, Screaming God, Silver City, uh, the Wave, this thing, the this, the 3D board, <laughs> uh, an extra 1.6 rulebook, which I don't know why this says 1.6 rulebook, I don't it doesn't appear that there is going to be a 1.6 rulebook. Um, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it says right here, if you're not looking to, up, if you're looking to upgrade your 1.5 to 1.6, please pre-order legendary card pack. You do not need this rulebook. So I don't know why this is hardcover 1.6 rulebook. This should still just remain to just be a 1.5 rulebook. I don't get this. So... As far as I know, nothing in the card pack is going to change the book. There might be stickers or something. But even then, I don't think stickers are meant to be permanent. They're meant to be optional. Um, let me rephrase that. Uh, the stickers are not meant to be part of the game unless you want them to be. Whereas if you change the rulebook all the time, they would be in there. Uh, like, you know, like the Dormant Twilight Cloak. So those things we're getting in the 1.6 pack. And even I think the 1.5 pre-order now is the 1.6 pre-order on the actual store i think even that is just 1.5 with the card pack i don't think it's actually um a separate thing at least i would hope that it's actually 1.5 with the card pack included because the card pack includes stuff for like dung beetle knight and stuff that would be kind of crappy for people who backed the pre-order the 1.6 but all they got was the core changes and then they would have to buy an additional 1.6 if they ever got dung beetle knight or lonely tree that would suck. So I would hope that it's just 1.5 with the card pack. And that's what I 100% believe that it is. And then this is said card pack. And that is it on the backer kit. 
As I'm recording this video right now, the backer kit is still open. Uh, I don't know how long it will stay open, but... Um... All right, so let's go look at the Kickstarter update. Here we are. This is the Black Friday 2020 update. Um, I'm just going to go over it real quick. I do suggest reading it. It's super fun. It would appear that Wave 3 is now going to be three different parts. Part 1 being the pinups, individual, all these pinups, plastic stone base inserts, which are awesome. I wish I didn't buy these. This is something I wish I would have gotten. So these new stone face inserts look awesome. Um, so that's great. They're cool. I wish I would have had them. The pinup collections, 1 through 5. Um, one pinups one through two were the original pinups with the original, um, stuff that was added in the original Kickstarter, I think, and then there's all new three, then pinups three, four, and five are new ones. Uh, individual pinups, I don't know exactly what this, I think these are just for people who ordered individual ones from the one, two, or three, four, five collection, because I don't think you had the option to order individual pinups from the original Echo, or from the original one club. One and two. Um, and then the Plastic Satan. All right. And then this is the Pledge Matter being open. And then here is the Legendary Card Pack. So, this will update the game to 1.6. From what I have seen, this is essential. <laughs> Let's not even beat around the bush with this one. I would 100% grab this. And I will say... Um, to try to be obviously I'm a huge fan of King of Death. Everybody who's gonna watch all this stuff is obviously going to be a huge fan of King of Death. And I'm going to try to be as partisan or un, you know as I can on all these things, all these expansions and everything, um, unbiased as I possibly can. Um, however, this one it's almost impossible not to be biased. This I'm so glad that he listened to the uh, complaints that people had, and rightfully so, that if he had just thrown this up on the store, that it would have been just scalped. Originally, his, his idea was to be uh, just put up the number of core games there were, just put that up on the shop, and then everybody will get it. That was his original thinking. Uh, that would have went horrendous. <laughs> that would have been terrible. That would have been horrendously bad. I'm so glad he put this on the backer kit so everybody can get a chance. I'm so glad he put pre-orders up for this. This is on the pre-order shop right now, so even if you don't have the backer kit, you can go get it. Also, I want to say on the shop, they have the uh, pre-order for 1.6 itself, which will be just 1.5 with this included. So, um, this is amazing. There's no way, other way of saying it. I mean, if you want to play it, you need to get this. So... You can see this is a Lion Knight fixed for the villain roll card. This is a fix, I'm pretty sure, for an antelope card that used to uh, reference a persistent injury that couldn't happen. So I think that's what this is. Um, this is fixed for the Lonely Tree. This is Sunstalker, a uh, strange resource that was missing. At least I'm pretty sure this is the strange resource that was missing. This is the Barber Surgeon uh, fix, in a sense. This is actually, um, again, so the, so the um, again, I just want to give you my opinion on things. There are probably people much more refined on the game or much more opinions. You don't, don't just take just my opinion. Uh, I think it's fun to share my opinion. It's fun to just talk about it, and I openly welcome debate in the comments. It's always so fun, regardless of how long you make a comment, I will always respond to everything that I can. I enjoy debating with people. This is an open invitation to debate me as much as you want, and I value listening to other people's opinions. It's a great way. <laughs> Open-mindedness is the best way to live your life. <laughs> so you could disagree, and you might even change my mind, and I'm always looking forward to that. Uh, so that should be fun. <laughs> So, in my opinion, this is actually... So what the, So what this is going to be, the Barber Surgeon used to be what you got for defeating a level 2 antelope. Uh, then you would add the Barber Surgeon if you had innovated pottery. Now the Barber Surgeon is built, as you can see here, from the organ grinder. 
So you build it with an Endeavor, which is amazing, not just for the fact that, you know, th this, is a, this is a fix for the game, right? This, this would have been problematic for moving forward. They had to do this because the Screaming Antelope is not in the Black Friday, or no, not Black Friday, not in the Gambler's Chest uh, campaign. The Screaming Antelope's not there. So you needed this, some way for this Barber Surgeon to be gotten outside of the Antelope. That's why this was done. Um, they didn't fix trepanning at all. You can't die from it, from what I can see here. You still can't die from it, so that one thing that you can get in one of the Echoes is still just free. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much changes after that. So you get it from the Organ Grinder. Awesome. It's huge. Now, there's other stuff here. Like, now there are Perfect Hide, uh, Perfect Bones, and Perfect Organs. No idea what those are. I'm not even going to speculate on it. Either way, good change. Good change all around. I'm not even going to speculate on what those actually are. I'm assuming you make them, or the card pack is going to include um, more basic resources. Who knows? I think it's perfect. Don't know. Can't comment on any of that because I have no idea how, want, how it's going to work, so I won't even try. Um, but just be known, there's perfect organs, perfect tides, and perfect bones now. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, the other thing that's awesome about this, I think this actually fixes uh, spidicules, spidicules, spidiculus, however you want to say it. I've heard him say it in some other Gen Con interviews that he wanted it to be like a combination of ridiculous and Hercules, which would be spidiculus, I guess, or spidicules, spidic spidiculus, spid spidicles. I don't know. I don't think he even knows how he wants to say it. So, <laughs> uh, here's Sonic Tomahawk. This is getting buffed. Uh, this is awesome fix. Final Lantern just has Lantern keyword now. Good. I don't know how that ever made it out of testing. I, I just okay, fine, good. Should have never been. That should never been an issue anyway. Uh, there's also a Scrap Bone Spear now. Good, I guess. Um. Stone Circle is now rewarded just for beating an antelope, just like the Catarium. So this, I'm assuming this would be the resource card. I think I've also seen, uh, where is it? Yes, Monster, you can't see it here. Monster Grease is now two organs instead of one. Slight, I mean, it's still amazing for the cost. So um, I don't, yeah. I, if so, if moving Barber Surgeon off of uh, the antelope was his consideration for an antelope nerf, which he promised, if that was a nerf, I, I mean, I guess that's the nerf. I mean, yeah, technically it rewards less now. Don't know. So, 1.6. You should definitely get this card pack regardless. Who cares? You've got to get it. It's amazing. All right. So, let's move on. King of Death Monster 1.6. Should be shipping in May 2021. Who knows? That's the core reprint. We'll see what happens. We'll see. So that is the first part of Wave 1 of now Wave 3. Wave 2 will be the Gambler's Chest. So we'll talk. This is Part 2 of Wave 3. It says we should be getting it in July or August. We'll see. <laughs> Super skeptical on any of his planned dates. Uh, as far as I know, he hasn't even sent it out yet. So yeah, ideally, ideally, goes into production in February. So, hopefully, uh, yeah. Then he just talks about how the gambler's chest exploded here. This was the original pitch. This is what it actually is. Um, sure. Here's this. This is the full spectrum of scope creep, as he calls it. Which would be these narrative minis, I guess. Those were just bonus. I mean, this wasn't really a scope creep. I, 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 I guess this was already this was pitched already. It's not really scope creep. The pattern system, yeah, that's new. Scout system was pitched, but yeah, counter system again was pitched. This I have no idea why this is in here. Should not be in here. I. This is weird. The two brutal A cards for the Flower Knight. I'm glad we're getting them before campaigns of death. However. 
Why it's in the gambler's chest, I have no idea. Uh, I, I guess because he said it was going to be. Either way, he also said many other things would be in the 1.6 card pack, which are not going to be in there. I'm not talking about the promos. I'm talking specifically about the Gold Smoke Knight uh, strain card that was supposed to lead to other things, which was taken out. Uh, so whatever. I, this is super weird. I have no idea why that's this is this should be in Campaigns of Death. I'm assuming the reason why we're getting it now is because Campaigns of Death is probably not going to be in 2021. My opinion, again, I see no way we're getting that in 2021. He doesn't even talk about it in this update, but who knows? Maybe we will. Uh, the Wanderer system, this is amazing. New monsters added. Okay, again, philosophy. This is all awesome. Everything here is all awesome. Some of it's not skull creep. Some of it was already pitched. This was already pitched, but again, still awesome. There's no bad things for me to say about all this stuff. Uh, the narrative miniatures. Yep, these. There's been tons of these. These are all. Yep, these are all whatever. These have already been shown. All these pictures were shown two or three years ago. Yep. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Mm hmm So, yep. This is actually cool. This is, I mean, this is cool. This is 3D terrain, basically. I like this one. <laughs> uh, this is my favorite sculpt of all of them, and my most favorite, uh, the hybrid beast armor. I've been looking forward to this because it looks like uh, just from based on what it looks like for the gear, it's going to be amazing. These are cool. Again, cool, cool. Yep, this is awesome. I like the fact that, uh, you know, he's not your basic looking guy. That's awesome. These are all amazing. Okay, awesome. Yep, yep, yep. 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 These, okay, whatever. These have all been shown forever. Two, three years ago. So, pattern location cards. These have already been included. Not these specific patterns, but they've been inclu included in 10 years. Are the 10th anniversary survivors. Uh, they look good. Some of them look kind of weird as to how you get them. Uh, but I have not had a chance to play with the 10th anniversary survivors. I was able to get them this Black Friday. So, awesome there. We'll hope that... Uh, it looks like a fine enough system in itself, good enough, fine. <laughs> I can't comment on any of this stuff. It looks good. Hopefully it is good. Looks good to me. Um, a crafting table, straight out of Minecraft, I guess. This is how, for all your insight pattern, crafting table innovations, for all your, I don't know, I guess that's where you have you might have to make this. You have to make the innovation before you can craft these uh, things, I guess. Probably. Good. Fine enough. Uh, then he just goes into the fact that these are promo. You can make things fine. So, here's actual new content that's not just... I don't know. I, I would call these patterns like fluff, kind of. They're like not really a new system. They're just cool. <laughs> I, I don't know what Torment does. It might be a keyword already, but either way, just cool. Patterns are cool. They're just bonus stuff. I don't see not much else to say about that. <laughs> just another way of getting gear. Uh, it's a cool way, I guess. It sucks, kind of, that some things are blocked way behind crazy uh, needing certain fighting arts and certain things to happen, but whatever. That's the game. It's always been like that. So, Scout System. Again, all these things are in Campaigns of Death. So, Scout System. Uh, this was pitched, again, so the Scout System will be... Well, we. I guess I'll just read it. Again, I'm not used to doing this where you talk about things and then just share your ideas. Still new to it. <laughs> Feel free to also give me tips on, oh, look, this, you need to be better, more concise. <laughs> I'll learn as I go. Anyway. Uh, so the scout system is an optional system that thematically explores why survivor's gear returns to the settlement when they perish and what might happen if that convenience wasn't available. Uh, you also need uh, esteemed services to return corpses to the settlement too. So this scout system looks awesome. Uh, it's actually, well, it's not my favorite part of the gambler's chest, um, but it's, it's probably my second favorite part of this. I love this scout system idea 
Uh, it's just a whole bunch of stuff, whatever. So it looks like you just take a fifth survivor from what it looks like. I could be wrong here. Again, this is all just opinion. One more survivor departs. Uh, burning of the... So you get a gear card here. A gear grid. So this is the scout. And then it looks like they're going to be on the board as a fifth survivor uh, to start, perhaps. Because this gives them minus two movement. And I know later during this update you get in, there's an innovation that makes it so they don't start on the board so uh yeah when you start the showdown and have not been uh safe arrival you start the showdown and have not been ambushed i guess that's what's considered a safe arrival okay scout reports give you more details on your favorite monsters so scout reports this looks like uh gorm probably here i think there was a hunt event where they were gorms marched and crushed stone faces uh, Lonely Tree here, so I'm assuming this is the Lonely Tree, could be wrong. Now, it says that the Gambler's Chest only comes with six scout reports, so I don't know what this is, um, but I would assume that this artwork, Gorm, and, because I don't know what this would be in the Gambler's Chest. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say what these would be, these scout reports. Maybe the crocodile. I don't know if the artwork is corresponding to a monster. So, here's the gear yep, on a safe arrival, which was described here. It's safe arrivals when you're not ambushed. Uh, nice. It's nice wording, in a sense, because it just says you're not ambushed. It still means you could ambush the monster and still have a safe arrival if you ambush them. Set you carefully hide off the showdown board. This is what I was talking about. So it looks like the fifth survivor will be someone that you choose ahead of time when you depart. So they'll probably be departing survivors. Um, I would assume that you can't pick someone who can't depart. It looks like they'll be scouts will be classified as a departing survivor. And they'll be on the board until you get the stone face cloak. Uh, disguise kit after a hunt event or an encounter where a survivor... English is great, and I'm just going to read it as is. After a hunt event or encounter where a survivor died is resolved. So it should be, should read after a hunt event or an encounter with a survivor, where a survivor death is involved, you dramatically reveal yourself, the scout dies instead of that survivor. Okay. I don't know. I, 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 just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how would I don't know how a disguise kit would save you from I don't know, being stuck in a rock or falling off a cliff or falling down into a pit, sinking in quicksand, save you from a harvester that's attracted to instruments. Don't know. Whatever. Doesn't need to be thematic. So this looks like the outskirts settlement location, outskirts settlement location. Neat little artwork here. So that's the scouts. I think the scouts are going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. The reason why I like the scouts is it's something you can add to every game regardless. You could add the scouts to a Sunstalker, People of the Sun. You could add to People of uh, the Dreamkeeper, obviously. Pe people of the Lantern. You could add it to any one of them. The scouts do not interfere and they're very vers versatile to any campaign, which is awesome. They're not monster dependent, they're not anything like that, unless these things require certain monsters, which I hope they don't. <laughs> make these things crafted with basic resources, please. Do not make these things require a certain quarry. Uh, just make it very bland and something that could be added to every single game. I would love that. That's what I hope from the scouts. Not much else to say in the scouts. I think it's gonna be great. Now, here's the encounter system. Hmm. Encounter system, I'm a little bit iffy on. So the encounter system is an optional system that brings your survivors face to face with monsters that hunt the survivors on their way to the quarry. It adds more depth, increases the challenge of your campaign, and offers new opportunity to, for survivor builds. Uh, so this was the Bone Eaters. That's the one we're getting. Originally it was supposed to be the Smog Singers, but that was changed to a Node 2 quarry. 
So now it is the uh, Bone Eaters. They gleefully add your first encounter card to the basic hunt event deck. So cool. Uh, hopefully he matches the cards this time. Uh, I know there was some times where the other hunt events, you can pick it out because the back doesn't match, which sucks, but whatever. Uh, wait patiently in the darkness for the survivors to reveal the encounter card. Yep. So it's just a hunt event. It's just overly thematically saying stuff here. Consult your encounter story event, referring to the appropriate encounter level. Show the card, reveal an encounter. This is quite a large amount of table space, um, and it's very confined here. Uh, not a very big board, as you can see here. So, yeah. Um, again, just my opinion. You can disagree with me if you want. Uh, that's a lot of table space. This game takes up a lot of table space. Um, I play on a custom built thing that I've made that's six by eight. No, six, four by six. Four by six table that I custom made, and I won't have room for this. <laughs> There's no way I could set this up every single time. It would have to be set up on top of the board, probably when I play it. I don't know how exactly I'll do this. A lot of table space. Uh, I'm assuming that he doesn't think about that when he designs because he plays in a big warehouse, so he's just like, whatever, we have all the space in the world. But uh, this is a lot of real estate on your table. Uh, you play the... Yep. So these are just encounters. Carefully kill your prey. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we'll talk about... Yep. So this is just this. Unlikely case. In the unlikely case that you've underestimated your prey, this talking like this is talking from the perspective of a bone eater i'm assuming unless survivors are not being hunted and they're not the prey for once replace the first encounter card with a second encounter card and come back stronger yeah this is from the perspective of a bone eater here's the bone eaters bone eaters bone eaters bone eaters bone eaters bone eaters good 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 more bone eaters good all yeah Good, yep, good bone eaters, good. Okay, uh, that's basically it for the encounter system. So, my opinion on the encounter system is optional. I don't know if I'll be using it um, all the time. Mainly just because uh, I already have a problem with level 3 hunts taking too long. It's not something that I ever really noticed. Um... Till I started making content for YouTube and editing the video and stuff that I noticed that those stupid hunts, level 3 hunts, are so stupid. <laughs> they take 40 minutes sometimes. Especially the antelope that goes all the way back to starvation. I just dread, really, 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 really dread a hunt with an encounter, um... That you, you could take a hunt, an encounter, a show... So doing just departing survivors, go to the hunt, play an encounter, then finish the hunt, then do a showdown, uh, then do a settlement event. That's one lantern you... That could take upwards of three hours with this encounter system because I've had hunts with level three antelopes that already take like two and a half hours. Uh... So this encounter system better only be like a f 5 or 10 minute thing, which I highly doubt. Especially if they get stronger and stronger. Uh, the game is too long. <laughs> a lantern year is too long. And I don't think I have time for that. Either, what I would probably do is probably do one or two in the early campaign years. Like, I would probably stop, I would remove encounters probably after Lantern Year 15 or something, and just say, you know what, the settlement's gotten good enough, they don't get ambushed by encounters anymore. Just so I could use them and not have to worry about playing for three hours. Um, it's just my opinion. I think the encounter system itself will be fun. Uh, I am looking forward to it, but I 
feel like the end game in this game takes too long to play sometimes, and I don't want to do an encounter on the hunt. The hunt thing, just my opinion, it's sometimes just too long. It's just sometimes too long. So, Wanderer System. This is what I'm so... I love this one. This is, the, this is my favorite part of the whole game was chest, is the Wanderer System. Obviously the new quarries, but those are like secondary to me, kind of, because... It's just a new campaign and a new core. It's not really new stuff. I know it is new content, but this is new stuff. Uh, this Wanderer system seems awesome because... Um, so I'll read through it. So the Wanderer system is an optional system that introduces a unique visitor and their agenda to the settlement. Uh, yeah, okay. Sometimes... Whatever. I'm just going to read it the way it's written. Uh, assist them. So whatever. These, basically what these wanderers are, people are just going to show up in your settlement at random. So this person's luck. He comes with this booklet here. This is when he shows up. You get your little story event. This is such a small thing, but at the same time so awesome because um, I've never seen this done before where the, besides for the Kingsman, because that's the, the armor taking over someone's body little parts. But yes, you, you have other dice in the game besides a d10. <laughs> Incorporate the other dice. Incorporate other things besides just rolling on a d10 chart. Incorporate... I'm a I'm huge, huge advocate for him in incorporating, you know, kind of like a D&D &D kind of like system, the skill-based system. I know some things have it where if you're carrying a whip, you can roll on a different table or stuff like that, but just something that's not just rolling on a d10 table all the time because... It gets very repetitive. And the fact that he's now remembered that he has other dice in his game, awesome. So these are Wanderers. They show up. They're on the timeline, which is awesome. I'll get into that too. But so basically it happens. You decide what it is you want to do. Either you turn him away or you help him. Then you roll and things happen. This could all be changed. I don't need to go into it. And then inside you'll find the rules for story events, complications and knowledge they might pass on to the settlement. So, here you go. This is a fighting art on arrival. Gain plus one luck token. All our survivals gain a minus one luck token. Awesome. This is just a regular fighting art. I don't know if some way of it getting added to the deck. Awesome. Typical campaign. Should have no more than one Ronderer. I don't know. I might personally disagree with this. I probably will add a lot of Wanderers. I don't... Maybe there's something wrong with it, but uh, I'll get into why I want to add. I would add more than one. There's many more Wanderers playing in the future. This is also awesome because this is a way for him to make those white boxes more useful and have more uh, content in them. Use them as Wanderer system. I, I, love, I love the Wanderer system. This is my favorite thing of all of it. So, oh, that was the end of it. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, I'll talk more about the Wanderer system here when, when we get done with here. So there's just the six new monsters. Crimson Rocktile, Gambler. Uh, Song Shrimps, which is not it. This is... I never even noticed it said this before. I read this once before. Uh, this is the Smog Singers. Uh, Atnus, which is just Santa backwards. Uh, King. And God Hand. So... Again, Crimson, Cro Crimson Crocodile is a Node 1 quarry monster. So that means he replaces the White Lion. And not all Node 1s replace the... Not all Node 1s replace the white lion so to call things a node one uh this crimson crocodile should have a different name because this ad this is a prologue monster this is a prologue for this um i would wish that the i wish the crimson crocodile wasn't referred to as a node one i wish it was referred to as a prologue monster but technically it's a node one i guess that means if you're playing in a People of the Lantern um, campaign, you don't add him as a prologue, so he's kind of like a node one that you could just hunt like the Gorm. So you'd still keep the White Lion, I guess. Either way, he has a prologue. That's the best thing about it. All this other stuff, whatever. Uh, I can't really give much anything on this because I, I don't know how it's played. The, this appears to be his hit location deck, so he's a special hit location deck. The monster is proudly coated in reflected translucent scabs. 
that sparkle as it moves. Shuffle the monster's tender hit locations and place the enchanted flesh on top. Draw these locations from the bottom of the stack. So this is like a covering to sh so you don't see which one is next. So I don't know exactly how these tender hit locations will work. Uh, it would appear that this arrow or this box is the monster itself. So I'm assuming that he's a three by three monster. And this is his facing. So this would need to be the space, the middle space of his facing would be the spot that you need to be standing. So you need to be standing right in front of him in the middle, I guess. I don't know. This could be the three spaces behind him and that's where he is in that, I don't know. But I'm assuming that's what that is. The only thing that worries with this is, uh, I guess this is a nerf to spears and bows. And if it's not a nerf to spears and bows, uh, then this this is just really weird. I don't know how this will work because you could be standing here and technically with a ranged weapon you could also be hitting there. I don't know how this works, see, so I can't comment on it. Uh, if it works anything like pr pr the blind spot, you would need to be standing in this one space exactly. Right in front of it and you need to be right adjacent to that blue space. Uh, here's Crimson Croc stuff. Again, I can't Comment on it. I don't want to comment on any of the stuff because I don't know how it's going to work. Here's changing the artwork or whatever. This is interesting. Here, I think there might be level four monsters. Uh, level one, two, this three. And this would be the level four. Uh, that's my theory here. Um, I think that's what's probably going to happen. So it looks like from this right here, you would build a deck based on the level that you're fighting it. So let's say this vein glass here. This would be, let's say this is level one, level two, level three, level four, or this is level one, two, three, four. Uh, either way, I don't know. But so you, if this here, maybe this means level zero, level one, level two, level three. Don't know. If this is level zero, then this is the prologue, means this would not be in the deck of resources from a prologue. This would be level one, level two, level three. If this is, uh, so if it's a level three, you include everything level one, level two, level three in the, in the resource deck. Maybe if there's a head up here, this would be level three only, or maybe this would be level one only, and this is level three only. It might suggest here that the resource decks are level specific, which would be a great new addition uh, to the game. I think this would help the game in the long run, having level specific rewards other than other than just getting more resources. Um, but the main thing is I would hope they would move the, the fighting only level three monsters at the end. It's not like it matters, some other resources, Tender hit locations. See here, it looks like you're going to get plus four strength if you're standing here. Or plus four to hit, plus four luck. Who knows? I don't know exactly how this works unless this means you're standing here and if he's the monster's here. I don't know how this works, so I can't comment on it. Uh, high grade, yeah, so here it is. High grade resources only available on level three plus crocs. So one, two, oh, this would be the star here. This is what I was talking about. Like I said, I read this before, I just didn't remember. So this would be only level three. Um, only level three. So this is awesome. I'm glad that this is in the game. And here's the armor sets. Again, it looks like you're gonna be a static pose with variable heads and, and body. Fine, I think that's fine. Uh, the narrative ones were cool also, but all this is fine. Artwork is fine. Here's the smog singers. This is no two. These replace the antelope. Multiple things on the board. I'm a fan of that. Um, I don't know. All living survivors and monsters are singing. Their combined choruses reaches something deep in the darkness. Singing whale. This is a trait. Um, it looks like there's going to be alternate wind conditions. I think he mentioned that once before for these smog singers. Fine. Awesome. Can't comment on it. I haven't played it. Might be good, might be lame, who knows. Again, this is just the status. This is when you kill one. 
Yeah. When you wound the monster, you feel terrible, put a guilt token on you. When you have three, emotional breakdown, and then there's the murder thing. Uh, either way, great. All this, I don't know how to comment on any of this stuff, because I have no idea how it would work. Um, here is the bards, the barbarians. Um, just the bardic survivors, they're just going to be all bards. Yep, these are amazing. Love all these poses. Awesome stuff. Here's more survivors. It looks like every single instrument's going to be a weapon, so I hope we get a new uh, hunt table that doesn't include the harvester, or I hope being noisy just isn't such a penalty. Otherwise, these weapons kind of suck. They don't, they don't suck. They're just... There's a big negative to them, and you would never want everybody on the hunt to have noisy instruments. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's cool. I love this Song of Sharpening 8. I'm assuming that this is the range of it. So range 8, they must have changed now. Maybe bows won't say range 8. I don't know what's actually what this parenthesis actually means. I'm assuming it means range 8. So anyone within 8 squares of Song of Perfection, all survivors increase the range perfect hits by one this is awesome all this stuff really cool really cool uh santa here this is a nemesis monster included with the game uh, good don't know can't comment on it don't know I haven't seen anything to play from it whatever it's included in the gambler's chest king also included he's uh node four so Node 4 is a new one. There's currently no Node 4 that I know of. The Lion God should probably be a Node 4. Um, but this is the king. He was originally part of the original Lantern Festival. Just, he loves himself as king. He's just got all this stuff here. This has all been shown before. Shown before. Shown. Not these haven't been exactly shown before. But still, just king, 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 king stuff. Awesome king stuff. Let's go king stuff more yep awesome just weapons good let's go it's very strong stuff i don't know what death metal is but whatever death metal should have been included in the bard stuff <laughs> here's the gambler this replaces the watcher uh yep this just have him building his sculpt is building his sculpt yep building his sculpt took a long time to build this sculpt long time to build this sculpt long time to build this sculpt uh he showed it two years ago long time to build this sculpt he loves his sculpts long, uh, good 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 yep uh that's i'm assuming the location that is underneath the gambler who knows it's gaming gazebo whatever so here's the final battle of the gambler's chest which this replaces gold smoke knight uh which is the god hand because the God Hand's final banner of the Dreamkeeper campaign is not a monster that's compatible with other campaigns. I don't see why it isn't compatible with other campaigns. I'll get into that. But whatever. Maybe. Hopefully I'm wrong. But here's the God Hand. Sorry. Whatever. He's not going to be posting any teasers about the God Hand. Philosophy system. This looks super cool. Um, this is the best part about Advanced Kingdom Death. Um, I'm looking forward to this. The reason why I said I like the Wanderers better is the Wanderers is something you could add to every 1.5 game or every People of Stars, People of Sun. This philosophy system, I'm assuming you might be able to go back and do it, depending on how it works. Maybe you can't. He has pitched before that Advanced Kingdom Death is going to be its own thing. So maybe People of the Stars, People of the Sun, you won't be able to do the new system until we get Campaigns of Death. Um, hopefully that is the case. But anyway, so here's the philosophy system. This looks awesome. I don't know exactly how this works because I haven't seen it. Can't really comment on it. New character sheets. Looks like you get rid of your fighting arts and you get these knowledge decks, which I'm assuming are still the fighting art cards because um, it does make reference to fighting arts in these books. So you must still use them. You just must not draw from them. You must just build these custom decks here. So, yep, here's the philosophies. Uh, and their knowledge, all this stuff. Campaign with Ark Survivors have two new decks, the character deck and the knowledge decks. Ark Survivors consume fighting arts for luminosity. Don't know what that means. 
These new decks uniquely evolve based on the course of the campaign, adding and removing cards as survivors' fates change. When an Ark Survivor gains a knowledge from their philosophy, is added to the Settlement's Knowledge Deck. When an Ark Survivor is named, they earn a nugget of the Settlement's collective efforts and draw from the Knowledge Deck. Collective Cognition, you are what you eat. Uh, Ark Survivors uses shared experiences more efficiently. This is called Collective Cognition and represents the Settlement mental acuity and cultural potential. So this just shows that you get more CC, more hunt experience, which I think this might just replace hunt experience, but not completely replace it. Instead of getting age milestones, it looks like you're just going to have CC milestones. So age milestones will still be there, obviously, but I'm saying they'll probably be changed slightly, maybe, who knows. So level 1s to level 3. CC points are awarded the settlement, eats a wider range of monsters, develop their brains, cognitive functions, and unlocking a host of new settlement developments. Okay, here's all the cards. Just a whole bunch of cards. Forms a new settlement location. Uh, returns as far as game plus one. Doesn't look like that's Endeavors. Looks like that's something else. Eight CC milestones await you. Can you earn them all? Just more artwork. So the philosophy books, probably the same size as the Wanderer books. I'm assuming it's probably the same size as the Giggle Lion book. That, uh, you know, the, the instruction book that was included in the Giggle Lion. I'm assuming that's how all big these all are all going to be. Uh, originally, philosophies were designed to be a single double-sided card. They have blossomed into small books, each with about four or five pages full of art and filled with all that word stuff, which is... Hmm. Sometimes his rules aren't very tight and are very open to interpretation, so all that word stuff could be comp like complicated. But well, hopefully it's very straightforward and very well written. Um... Don't know any of this stuff. I literally can't comment on any of this because I don't know how it works. Looks cool. Looks cool. Um, I think we've seen Meat Shield once before. Just looks cool. Uh, survivalism. Yeah, just all these stuff. Yeah. Looks good. Looks cool. 120 new knowledge cards. All your weapons gain paired. When you wound with with a pair of weapons, plus one. So I don't know if you're actually filling these in. I'm assuming you're not actually filling these in. <laughs> uh, I hope not. I hope that you're not doing that, but whatever. Hopefully it's on your character sheet. I'm pretty sure the character sheet had all those boxes there. Okay, and then as you level up, you get all this stuff. Here's more stuff. This is crazy. When your left and right column of your gear grid match, your attacks gain devastating one. This is just crazy when you fill this all out. It looks amazing. Looks awesome. Philosophy system artwork. Yeah, new artwork obviously goes without saying. Uh, just awesome. All this stuff. Okay. Here's the Dream Keeper camp. Oh, so philosophies. I can't comment on it really. I don't know how it's going to work. Looks cool. It might be only Dreamweaver campaign. Don't know. We'll, we'll see. Okay. So here's Dreamkeeper campaign. Campaign featuring Ark Survivors, the Philosophy System, Pattern System, Scout System, Wanderer System, Encounter System, blah, 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 blah. It's basically a new game. Here's this. So it's the Gambler replaces the Watcher. This will be replacing the Lion, Antelope. Phoenix is still here. He has a new event. I saw that. Uh, the King is a Node 4. There never was one of these before. This is an encounter. Butcher is still here. Atnis replaces Kingsman which I don't know why the Kingsman isn't here. I would have rather seen Atnus replace the Butcher, whatever. It would have been neat to have Kingsman, you know, still be with the Hand and the God, or the Hand and the King, now that the King's there, to actually have the Kingsman, whatever, who cares? I'm sure it's all going to make sense, maybe. Uh, then the Hand and the God Hand. So, here you can see the new uh, sheet here. What is interesting about the new settlement sheet Things of note is returning Ark Survivors. It says that right there. So this would be what you would probably use if you wanted to play a different uh, philosophy system and a different thing, like People of the Lantern, or if you wanted to play it in People of the Stars, People of the Sun. Don't think you're going to be able to, but that's fine. We already have Survivors from People of the uh, Stars that you can't use in People of the Lantern. Just a shame, but... Uh, then you have all these things, Dead Stranger, all these things. 
Uh, where is seven? Yeah, my future self, that's year seven. So that's the new Phoenix event, I'm assuming. That's the new Phoenix event, my future self. Because that would normally be the feather or rainbow feather. Uh, I forget what it's called now. Uh, where the person gains hoarder or whatever. Um, then it looks all the same here. Uh, suspicious regal visit is probably the new hand one. Um, yep, doesn't look like anything anything here changes. Gambler's chest, I'm assuming, is the before the watcher. This probably might be where you get the gazebo or whatever. Then you have. It doesn't look like you can push this back because in the in the regular core game, lantern year twenty five. It says Encounter the Watcher, and you can do it on Lantern Year 20. This looks like Lantern Year 20, you just fight the gambler, and then Lantern Year 21, the king, the, the awaited, I'm assuming this is the king. So this is opening of Node 4. And then Lantern Year 22, you have Luck, the Wanderer, added. So, this is why I like the Wanderer system. You see this blank, just massive void of nothing down here? It's the same thing the other game has currently. Where once you defeat the Watcher, you're just doing nothing. It's just going to be no story events, nothing leading up to the God Hand, or nothing leading up to the Gold Smoke Knight. You have no story events here. You just do the King, now you can hunt the King, then it's just hunting the King. King, 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 and then we fight the God Hand and lose and the settlement's killed. That's what it would appear. If Wanderers weren't in here, this would just be fight the Gambler. Now you can only fight level 3s. And node fours. Or maybe now it's you can only fight the king. Who knows? But either way, I don't like this just blanket void from Lantern Year 20 to 30. I don't like it. I don't like it in the current game. It looks like it's just returned here. But this is why the Wanderers are awesome. Uh, at least you'll have something to do, a story to be told while you just mindlessly hunt things. I know there wasn't much of a story to be told here. It's not like. In the basic game, these other stories are really being told, like when you count the settlement or a strange, uh, whatever, regal visit, then they count. It's not like there's much of a story being told there anyway, but at least it builds towards something. I don't know, I wish the God Hand had some kind of story for him, but it doesn't appear like he's going to. Maybe this suspicious regal visit might lead to him maybe it's like oh if you beat me now then i'm gonna come back and try harder 15 years from now i don't know but at least the wanderers can make us some sort of a story here which is awesome so i'm happy for the wanderers yeah here's all the cc this is interesting this is the new first settlement event that replaces the first day or whatever uh i found this one interesting so um when you roll to see how many your popu starting population is, you can roll low, get seven unnamed survivors and return survivors. Four to six, you get a nine survivors plus returning survivors. A seven plus, you get ten survivors plus returning survivors. Plus, you archive the remaining survivors or the returning survivors cloth and gain that many bloody cloth rare gear. Uh, I find that one interesting mostly because you don't lose your so if you roll one one to six you don't lose the cloth you don't gain this bloody cloth which i'm sure will be used to make something but you do lose the cloth uh and if you have the beyond the wall or before the wall one of those ones the vag the vagabond armor that uses the tabard you need that cloth so our tabard um interesting you could you might not be able to use that specific gear set if you roll high interesting so here's Keeper of the Dreams. Uh, another interesting theory here is it doesn't look like, um, at least from this, unless he has a whole bunch of lanterns, it looks like broken lanterns are going to be harder to get, um, which is good or interesting because iron is uh, not impossible to get, but at least when you did this, you... Uh, I think you could wander and get one broken lantern, and then after, you know, after the Watcher, all that stuff, you can go in there and get, like, six broken lanterns, but... Uh, so that's interesting. Might make iron harder to get. And then just more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Just more 
pictures. These pictures have all been shown before. Not all of them, but a lot of them have been shown before. Cool. This, yep. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool. I'm assuming this looks like it says this is an Atlas-related story event. But uh, the God Hand looks like he's carrying around four heads. So that's interesting. I would have thought that this would have been, like, God Hand related. But who knows? King Coins for rewards. Cool. Uh, campaigns of Death, just no information on this. That's why I don't feel the Campaigns of Death will be out uh, soon. <laughs> probably not this year. I mean, not, not 2021, probably 2022. So, in the not-so-distant future, that could be a year from now, uh, we'll make a big update that brings everything into the Campaigns of Death together like we did for the Gambler's Chess expansion. So, yep, there. that's all we get of campaigns of death people have been asking for information on campaigns of death i will talk about campaigns of death uh this video is already quite long just going over this i didn't think it would be that long i was trying to skim through it really fast but it appears it wasn't fast enough um hard plastic showdown board cool this is two hundred dollars uh this is more alpha showdown tracker this showdown tracker i would hope he does scripting for this i think this is awesome idea i hope he does scripting because if they're using this to play test and he had someone you know because he, he said he hired people to make this for him if he hired someone who actually knows how to script events he would be able to find he would have to tell them like how do infinite loops work when do you actually discard cards when do you actually put a return to card to an ai deck how long do they stay in play before you draw a new card uh when exactly do things uh you know like it would make him think about things there's a lot of things that sometimes are missed when he explains rules uh and that was one like infinite loops even the new way of it doing he doesn't really nail it <laughs> uh it would also be nice because it would you know if there was scripting in there it would pick up a lot of errors you know, i talked about the dung beetle light how it couldn't even have built the deck itself because of all the typos and errors i would hope he pays someone to put scripting in this there's no scripting in it as it is right now but it's a missed opportunity i would hope he'd do that uh this year was whack as he says here's just some more pictures of the other game i guess that may never be made or be made or who knows uh yeah all kinds of cool stuff so uh, that's it for the update. That took a lot longer to explain. I'll probably have to cut this video and put it out in two parts. So, my opinion on Campaigns of Death and King, King of Death 1.6. Definitely should back King of Death 1.6. Regardless of, uh, like, anything. If you're not getting any more expansions, just get that card pack. It's awesome. Well-needed changes. Gambler's Chest, well worth it, even at the $325 mark or whatever it was. Uh, I think the Gamers Chess would be awesome. If it really is a staple of things moving forward, I think that's actually a pretty big step. I would also, you know, re recommend getting it. Uh, if you backed it, if you backed the Kickstarter, I think you just get it included, um, regardless of level or pledge level. I, th I think it was included in almost all of them for backing the main game. You get the Gamers Chest. I'll talk about Campaigns of Death next, going back to other older updates where we actually have information on it. There's quite a bit of stuff there for Wave 3. I'll talk about it. Um, but until that one, I think I might have to cut the video here because I can see it's already quite long. I'm going to go to editing it. So, uh, thank you so much, as always. If this is the end, <laughs> if I end it up, I'll just cut this out and include the Gambler's Chest stuff. We will see. If not, thank you so much for watching. So very humbling. I hope this helped you decide whether or not you actually want the Gambler's Chest, whether or not you actually feel you need 1.6. This was just a talking point over the update. Uh, I'd love to hear feedback from everybody. It'd be great. I'll answer as many questions as I can. And uh, have fun holidays. <laughs> uh, I'm recording this was just Thanksgiving. So obviously because of the update and everything. Um, so I hope everybody have great holidays. And again, thank you so much. I hope to continue the playthroughs of the season one as soon as I can. I have uh, another video 
that I'll probably make talking about the situation because I didn't want to include it in this one. So, uh, thank you so much. <laughs>